Education is central to the realization of Uganda's economic transformation and the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals. To date, enrollment at the primary education level is estimated at 8.3 million children, resulting from the ongoing Universal Education Reform Program, which was introduced in 1997. Results from the national assessments reveal that half of the students do not achieve the required numeracy and literacy skills by primary six. Positive steps are being taken to enable equitable allocation of teachers, improved school infrastructure and availability of learning materials. However, there are a number of other factors that deserve attention for an effective and sustainable education quality enhancement drive. One out of every three children in public primary schools do not attend school every day due to economic and sociocultural factors which limits their ability to learn what is planned in the curriculum. Maintaining school registers and regular checks for the presence of students are very good measures of monitoring learner attendance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The increase in enrollment translates into crowded classrooms. These discourage teachers and hinder their ability to apply participatory learning methods since they cannot freely move to attend to children. Coupled with limited classroom resources and unhygienic learning environments, quality learning gets seriously compromised. Is that seven a reader? Huh? Uh -huh. So which means this line is wrong? Yes? It's wrong. Less crowded classrooms promote learning and enable teachers apply a wide range of methods, although these situations are not common, especially in lower classes. We use assessment. We assess these children according to classes, and then we get the general performance of the school. It's impressive to note that locally produced materials are being applied in school, but these may not be applicable to all learning areas of the curriculum. Topics like reading and writing for literacy or geometry and graphs in numeracy require children to have personal learning materials for them to understand and even apply what is being taught in the classroom. Now let each and everyone get a foot ruler, get out your jump preset, get out a foot ruler, a pair of compasses, and start. Those who have, those who have jump presets, put up your hand properly. You can also put up your hand and then organize it. Those who don't have you to see. Now what are you going to use? Lack of these materials compromises teacher effectiveness and pushes both teachers and learners to the age, resulting in low curriculum coverage. Children who have nothing to read, write on or write with cannot be expected to learn. These situations are interfaced with teacher absenteeism. Uh, partly it is there. It happens because of uh, some sickness of some teachers, some of the relatives of the teachers, and maybe death within the community, and some are without good reasons. There are also areas in the curriculum that teachers find hard to teach and hence require more training because it affects the students too. The World Bank recent study identifies areas that are hard for teachers. Teacher training and support efforts need to address these too. In the class teacher system, a teacher has to teach all of the subjects as indicated in the curriculum. You find that a teacher has some areas that may be challenging somewhere somehow and some areas where he can do very well. So in his or her teaching, you may find that uh, those areas where he or she can do well are done to the expectations. But those ones where he may also find that he's not very much interested, 
uh, some areas remain unteachable. This hinders the performance of the pupils in such a way that those areas where the teacher does not do well, uh, the child cannot do to the expectation. It's important to note that there are good practices in some schools which contribute to improved performance of teachers. Mm, we have what is called lesson observation. So during this time, the, the supervisor, it may be an administrator or it may be a senior teacher, goes to a classroom and observes the lesson while the teacher is teaching. And after the lesson, of course, he gives comments and marks. And after you come out and you discuss with the teacher the strong points and the weak points and where to improve. Inspection of schools by government officials is also important in quality assurance of education service delivery, but figures from the Uganda Bureau of Statistics show that one in four schools gets inspected at least once a year. Uh, as an inspector of schools, I have to ensure that I carry out regular inspection at least visiting a school once in a term. And I have to ensure that I instruct head teachers to ensure that they carry out a system of checking schemes of work and lesson plans. The quest for quality in education service delivery needs to be broadened. Learners should regularly attend school, be motivated and equipped to learn in hygienic environments. Support from school management, local leaders and parents are central to the quality education enhancement drive. Equally important are the teachers. Ongoing government efforts to recruit more teachers and reduce teacher absenteeism are in the right direction. These have to be complemented by updated teacher preparation in light of the challenges faced in the classrooms today, frequent teacher support, but traced by regular school inspection for quality assurance. Improving learning for all is a shared responsibility. <laughs>